to Covering the Fields with your host, Joe Ellison. Hello, sports fans. Welcome to Covering the Field, the weekly program that analyzes all sports, handicaps them, and makes predictions. I'm your host, Joe Ellison, and today we're going to talk about pro football, college football and basketball, hockey, the NBA, and our You Got Host segment. We'd like to remind you listeners to email us at coveringthefield at gmail.com. Please give us your feedback. Tell us your You Got Host stories and visit our coveringthefield.com website daily to check out our many articles and our picks of the day and week. Find us on Twitter at Covering Field. Now, kicking things off this week, I'd like to introduce our football expert, Big Richard Martin. How are you doing today? Doing great, Joe. Thanks for having me on the show. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. So, Big Rich, what was the big news in the National Football League last week? Well, the big news, like it is every week, it's all about COVID. COVID keeps coming in. It wrecked everybody's fantasy football. It wrecked uh, New Orleans even having a slight chance of winning last week on Monday Night Football. And it just COVID just wreaking havoc like it's doing everywhere in the United States. Uh, So I guess they started a new uh, guideline. The CDC started new guidelines and the NFL has adopted them. Right. Yeah. They just got with the Players Association, their union, and they went from 10 days of uh, if you're asymptomatic and you're not showing any signs to five days being isolated. So it, you know, the time of being able to being held out for no reason when you're not even having any symptoms and you're not contagious, it went down to five days. So that should maybe get the players back on the field faster. Yes, and it'll get the games finished also and on time. So the playoffs start on time and, uh, and the Super Bowl ends on time. And uh, it's, it's a pretty, uh, you know, pretty obvious move for the NFL and the correct move, it seems. Well, after last year, you know, with so many problems, we thought we were going to get through this year. And, you know, with the new variant coming out, it's definitely raving havoc on the NFL and all sports. Yes. So what happened uh, as far as uh, the action last week? Well, the action was all about Dallas, man. They were just, that offense is on fire. Uh, They looked like they were the team of the first four weeks. They just bounced back. They got out of their little slump or their little hump. Uh, Dak Prescott had 330 yards, passing four touchdowns. He looked like Superman out there. They looked like they're definitely a Super Bowl contender. The defense for Dallas was playing awesome. Uh, You know, they had five sacks, two interceptions, and one defensive touchdown. So just amazing. Dallas leads the league in defensive touchdowns with six. And uh, that fight on the Washington sideline was also pretty interesting in that game. Yeah, it seemed like uh, they were def- definitely uh, distraught about the, how they were getting handled by the Cowboys and the way the Washington uh, team went. And, you know, it was kind of weird. Both those guys were uh, University of Alabama defensive tackles and, yeah. you know, definitely got a fist fight on the side of the – didn't look good for the team. Didn't look like uh, they have much control in that team. And no. They're yes. in disarray for sure. That was the biggest uh, margin ever in that series, uh, 60 years or so, whatever it is. Right. Uh, yes, 42 points. 42 and, points and crazy. And, yes. And uh, who else made the headlines last well, week? Well, the headlines also was about Joe Burrow. I mean, what about throwing a half a thousand yards, half a century? He had 525 yards, four touchdowns. I mean, he was playing against a depleted defensive back from uh, Baltimore, but I mean, they beat him twice. They beat Pittsburgh twice, and they look like they're in the driver's seat to roll right through that AFC North. They look great this week. Uh, the Rams look great. Um, you know, if I had to pick a MVP for the season right now, I'm, I'm taking Cooper Cup. I mean, he has 14 touchdowns and 1,739 yards. Look great. He leads the leagues in receptions. I mean, he's just having an awesome year. Yes, Burrow, that was the fourth most ever in the history of the NFL, that 525 yards. Right, on Burrow, yeah. Yes. But talk yeah. about like uh, Cooper Cup. Would you give him your MVP vote right now? or who? I, I absolutely would give him uh, the MVP vote. Uh, leading, yes, like you said, touchdowns, receptions, yards. Uh, I don't know if that's ever been done before, but nobody's really, in my opinion, standing out uh, that can compete with them. People are saying Jonathan Taylor, but uh, what Cooper Cup is doing is more impressive, in my opinion. Right, and he's behind. Who who has the most receptions at 19, uh, 1,964 yards? You know who holds that uh, record there, Joe? Uh, I don't. I would just guess Jerry Rice. 
No, it's actually Megatron, Calvin Johnson from the University ah, yes. of Georgia Tech. Uh, he had that uh, one year, I think it was 2013, uh, when he set that record. Do you know what place he came in on that uh, MVP voting? Uh, I have no idea. Well, he actually came in fifth that year. Uh, he came behind Peyton Manning and come behind even J.J. Uh, Watt, the defensive player for when he was with Texas, came behind him. And uh, Tom Brady also behind him. So he actually came in fifth when he holds mm. that record this year. But uh, Cooper yeah. Cup just needs 225 yeah. yards to break that, uh, and he has two games to do it. So, My guess is uh, Megatron was probably on a losing team and still got 2,000 yards because he played right. for Detroit at the time. Exactly. And that's probably exactly. probably why he only got fifth. Right. Yes. But still, he holds a record, and uh, we hope uh -huh. Cooper Cup can do it this year. Okay. Other notes, uh, Buffalo and Cincinnati never punted in their games. Buffalo defeating New England to take over first place in the AFC East. Kansas City won their eighth straight to get their sixth consecutive AFC West title. Miami won their seventh straight, like you mentioned, Amazing. the fourth string quarterback. Right. Tampa Bay's Antonio Brown came back. He was out for eight weeks for a bad ankle and a fake COVID vaccination card. <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, I, mean yeah. I can't believe they just suspended him for the year for that. <laughs> uh, well, they talked about it. Houston uh, severely hurt uh, the Chargers, LA Chargers uh, chances to make the playoffs and Chicago eliminated Seattle. That's the first losing season in Russell Wilson's career. So as we stand now, uh, teams that have clinched their division, Kansas City, Dallas, Green Bay, and Tampa Bay, and teams that have clinched playoff bursts, Arizona and the LA Rams. Right. And, yes. And yesterday we, uh, we have to mention um, sad news, the death of John Madden, Super Bowl winner at the age of 85. Uh, what memories do you have of John Madden? Well, I remember actually, you know, anybody over the age of 50 remembers John Madden when he coached the Raiders back in the day when they were the, the tough and rough guys out there in Oakland. And I just remember him winning, uh, I think it was Super Bowl six when he beat the Minnesota Vikings. And, uh, you know, he was just an icon for, you know, for football and then when he became an announcer i mean everybody remembers him uh when he was the announcer for all the best games and thanksgiving games for fox or, or uh, cbs wherever he was with then and then also like today's generation everybody knows him for the video games he does with ae sports so just amazing he, he's touched so many different generations and just an icon for football for sure yes i, I remember a few games the sea of hands game the holy roller the ghost to the post uh, he was on the wrong end of the immaculate reception, but uh, certainly, yes, the, the football game, which I've never played. I was more of a techno bowl guy, but uh, <laughs> uh, Pat Summerall, you know, I mean, me being a Dallas fan, him and uh, John Madden, I mean, they seem to be on every single week. Yeah, uh, they were the, the voice Dallas. of football for sure during the, mm -hmm. the 90s and early 2000s. I mean, just mm -hmm. just amazing character yes. for football. Just it's sad for all of us. Yes, it is. So what kind of injury, COVID, and quarterback news do we have going into this week's action? Well, let's we'll start with Mike Evans. He landed on the COVID list. He's also has a hamstring, so he's definitely going to probably be out for Tampa Bay. Miles Sanders broke his hand. He is out for Philadelphia. The running back, Julio Jones, is out again. Like He's been out most of the season. Um, James Robinson for the Jaguars uh, towards Achilles. He's out for the year. Uh, Joe, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo uh, tore his UCL in his throwing arm, his throwing hand. So his thumb is, he has a uh, tear in his thumb, uh, ligament in his thumb. So he's having a hard time gripping the ball, and I don't think he's going to be starting this week. But they say Trey Lance is uh, taking all the first string reps, so I'm pretty sure we'll see him this week. So C Carson Wentz has a chance to actually play, even though he's on the COVID list. Right. He is not vaccinated, so he's not vaccinated. Uh, but he, with the new five-day, if he tests negative, he probably will be able to play. But you definitely want to keep an eye on that. Um, as the Colts are rolling right now, they're probably one of the hottest mm -hmm. teams in football. Yes. And Adam Thielen is done for Minnesota. Uh, your picks went 3-2 and two last week. Who are you betting on in week 17? Well, I'm going to stay with the Red Hot teams. I'm going to stay with the Rams. They're giving up three and a half. Uh, I think Cooper Cup probably gets close to that 225 against that depleted uh, DBs for Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore's, you know, heavy. Uh, they can stop the run, but they're going to have a hard time with the passing game. And I think Stafford has a great game, and I think that uh, they light up uh, Baltimore. 
I'm going to stay with Miami. They're seven in a row. Why can't it be eight? They're getting three and a half um, at Tennessee. Um, that'll be a good divisional game right there for the AFC, for a conference. Uh, who's going to be uh, taking try to compete with the Kansas City Chiefs? Um, I like Dallas. Um, they're at home against Arizona. Arizona's been reeling. Dallas is on fire. They're only giving up five and a half. I love that bet. I'm going to stay with uh, New Orleans. Uh, this week, hopefully to get their guys off their, their COVID. They should have their quarterback Hill back down there um, against Carolina. And then Green Bay, I'm going to take them on the it's either the Sunday or Monday night game. They have uh, this, it's supposed to be 10 degrees in Lambeau Field and snowing. They're getting six and a half. I love uh, Aaron Rodgers in the snow. And uh, I think they're going to continue to roll in the NFC. Well, I went one and one last week, uh, won with Detroit and lost with Green Bay against the spread. But I totally agree with you on Dallas, minus five and a half against Arizona. They won and covered four straight, uh, five and two against the spread home. Arizona's lost and not covered three straight. Now, they are seven and one against the spread on the road and five and oh as in a road underdog. But that one was just two weeks ago at Detroit where they lost 30 to 12. Uh, they're just not playing well right now. Yeah, uh, so. they were so hot earlier. And, you know, like Charles had him on his, to win in the NFC, uh, at the NFC and, and go to the Super Bowl. It just seems like, you know, they're, they're tanking, and I don't know if they can come back from that. Well, they're at least in the playoffs. They have a chance to get things back together. My other pick I like, Philadelphia minus four at Washington. Philadelphia has won five out of six. Eagles are five, one, and two against the spread in their last eight, according to my numbers, five and three against the spread on the road. The former Redskins have lost three in a row. They're two and five against the spread at home, one and three as a home underdog. And Philly just beat them 27 17 two weeks ago. So we'll see how that turns out. No, I was just saying, we'll see how it turns out. It seems like your picks are right on point. So. Yes, move on, moving on now to college football. What's happened so far during bowl season? Well, the bowl season, we'll look at the, the SEC is 0-4. Can you believe that? 0-4 uh, in their first four games. Uh, the only one that's covered was Missouri of all teams, which I picked in one of my picks. So the SEC is taken. They're usually one of the, you know, they're, they're, the, the, uh, the pro prolific uh, teams of the college football, and they've won most of their bowl games in the past, and they're 0-4 starting off. And we got the Mountain West that's 5-1, which we talked about them earlier this year. Yes, Mountain West will finish 5-1 and one as Hawaii and Boise State's bowl games uh, were canceled. Uh, I mean, I guess that would have to be even a bigger story. Uh, COVID in the bowl season, there's nothing like this has even come close to happening before. Uh, the Hawaii Military Holiday and Fenway Bowls all canceled uh, because of uh, teams having COVID. Barstool Sports Arizona Bowl got canceled because uh, of Boise State. Uh, that's, that was going to be the most interesting bowl in, in one sense. Uh, Barstool Sports, a digital media company, it's a website. There was not going to be live television on this game. They're going to have 36 cameras all over the field, but uh, they're going to have their own uh, little broadcast over the internet. Uh, but uh, some people happy that they're not sponsoring the bowl because they're accused of racist and misogynistic uh, practices. So. Right. But they're very, very popular in social media, and uh, they definitely would have had a following for sure. Without a doubt. So how is this college football playoff going to turn out? I mean, what if COVID hits that? Well, they're not going to push those games back. The, the, the Cotton Bowl and uh, the Sugar Bowl, is that the Cotton Bowl and the Orange Bowl, if they, if they, if they can't play, they're just going to have to forfeit the game. They're not going to push those games back. So the players are going to have to play with what they have, and um, they're very, very uh, aware of that. Both teams are trying to stay, you know, isolated and keep away from the public uh, with this new variant coming out with the, the COVID. So. Yeah. If they, if they forfeit, they're out. I mean, they, they, there is no pushing it back like they have in other, like the NFL. Well, the one game they can push back is the championship game. They can push it back from the 10th to the 14th. But uh, if anybody has to pull out of the December 31 games, uh, yes, they, they are out, completely finished. Now, if neither team plays in the championship game, there just won't be a championship game. It'll just be vacated. So 
hopefully that doesn't happen. Yeah, that would be terrible for college football. Yes, it does. And as far as the Mountain West, our, our beloved Nevada was a three to four point favorite to a seven point. Uh, they ended up being a seven point underdog because of transfers and players getting ready for the NFL. So, and they got beat up pretty badly by Western Michigan. Yeah, but their quarterback, they had the big old tall, seven foot eight. No, he's actually like six nine, but he looked like he was seven foot eight out there. Um, you know, uh, who's that? Uh, Cox looked pretty good. He has a strong yep. arm, and uh, it looks like something might be a big future for uh, Nevada. Let's look and see what they do next year. Going by uh, my original sheet, December 6th, that I got underdogs were 14 and seven going into today's games, today being Wednesday, uh, with 11 upsets. Uh, the over under was nine and three over when we spoke last week. Now it's 12 and nine over. So out of the last nine games, six have gone under. All right. So, well, you see the better teams have the better defenses. And so they're, you know, bringing the games back to a more realistic than a run against shootout like some of the first games we saw. Right. As far as the college football playoff is concerned, what should we expect? Well, I'm going to go with just what you said. You said take the dogs, right? The dirty dogs have been covering, right? So I'm going to go with the dogs. I like Cincinnati. I'll take that 13 and a half against Alabama. I know I picked Alabama to win at my first podcast this year. Uh, I think since he plays them tough, I think if they can keep the games in the 20s and the 30s, they should have any problems covering that 13.5. We saw the way Houston, uh, you know, pretty much manhandled with their offensive line and uh, the way they handled Auburn and Alabama had problems with Auburn. So I like the 13 and a half. Everybody's down since he's saying they don't have a chance. I say they keep it close. and Hopefully, you know, make a good game out of that Cotton Bowl. I'm going to stay with Michigan State. Joe, do you know uh, Michigan yes, State was not rated? Uh, Michigan, Michigan Wolverines. Yes. You know that they weren't rated this year, Joe, when they started at the preseason? Uh, I, I did notice that, and that's uh, never happened before where a team made well, the actually, playoff. Well, actually, there had. It is. It I, has before. It's oh. actually 30-some years ago, Joe. Oh. Do you know what team was not rated that actually won in 1990? Um. Not offhand, no. It's Georgia Tech, just like we were talking oh, about. Wow. Georgia Tech and Colorado, they tied that year, and they were not rated before. So Michigan's the only t- could could try to go with Georgia Tech uh, and uh, be in, you know, preseason, not even being ranked to win the national championship. So I like uh, Michigan. I think they'll keep it a little bit close. Uh, Georgia showed some holes last uh, a couple weeks ago in the SEC championship. So I think Michigan keeps it close. I'm going to take the dogs on both of those. Uh, should you make a national championship prediction now, since we do have odds for the last four teams? Well, uh, I'm going to bring that out to next week, Joe. Oh, okay. Let's see what we have next week. But I definitely think that I would love to see an unranked team win the national championship. I think that would be amazing. Well, I'm with you all the way. I'd love to see Cincinnati and Michigan cover. And if they could win outright, that would be amazing. I'm definitely rooting for that. Uh, but as far as the other bowl games are concerned, uh, your picks are eight and six so far. Who do you like spread wise in the other upcoming bowls? That's right. We got 12 games. I'm going to give you the big, rich, dirty dozen right here. Okay. Let's go at least, let's win eight or nine of those. And we give our girlfriend something really nice for a New Year's present here if we can nail, it, nail this. All right. We're going to start with South Carolina plus nine and a half North Car- against North Carolina in the Duke's Mayonnaise Bowl. I think North Carolina's defense has been shredded all year. I like South Carolina. They might not win, but I like them with that nine and a half. Let's go to the Music City Bowl. Purdue. Let's stay with the Big Ten. I love uh, Purdue plus six over Tennessee. Uh, SEC seems like they've been reeling. I'm going to stay with Purdue with the six. Michigan State, okay, this game we uh, against Pitt, I'm taking Michigan State. Uh, Walk, Kenneth Walker uh, is not playing in that, uh, but either is Pitt's quarterback, uh, Kenny Pickett is not playing, so I'm going to take the running game with the starting quarterback of Michigan State. The Las Vegas Bowl, we finally got a Pac-10 team that's going to play. I don't know if they'll make it through this with the COVID since the Pac-10 seems to cancel most of their games, but I'm going to take Arizona State with uh, – uh, with their star quarterback out there, I'm going to take with plus six. They might not win, but Wisconsin usually plays a low-scoring game. And I'm going to take uh, Arizona State. Uh, the Tax Slayer Bowl, guess who made it to that team there, Joe? Wake Forest finally got someone to play. Do you know who it is? Um, I, I missed that. Uh, they got Rutgers, five and seven. Uh, Rutgers is oh, coming yes. out. So Rutgers is going to get plus 15. But, Wake Forest defense is sorry. Yeah. I think they keep it closer than 15. Mm-hmm. 
Next, let's go to the Sugar Bowl. I love Ole Miss and Matt Carroll. Everything shows that he's going to play against Baylor. I know Baylor's had a good year, but I like Ole Miss minus the one and a half. I'm also staying with Arkansas minus one and the Outback Bowl against Penn State. I like Oklahoma State plus two and a half over Notre Dame. Over Dame's overrated. They lost their coach. Citrus Bowl. I like Kentucky. I'm giving minus three over Iowa. Iowa has not shown any sense of offense. Kentucky, I think, could play defense with them. I'm taking Kentucky minus three. The Rose Bowl. This is the big rich pick of the week. I love that minus four and a half. Ohio State over Utah. Overrated Pac-10. Ohio State. CJ goes off this week. Let's go ahead and stay with him. And then the Texas Bowl. I'm taking Kansas State minus three and a half over LSU. And that's Big Rich's Dirty Dozen, Dirty Picks of the Week. Big Richard, thank you for your insight. Let's look forward to this bowl week. It's been great so far. Let's hope COVID gets off uh, out, of the, out of the bowl season and we can finish out this season. Next up, we're going to talk about some pro hoops with our NBA analyst, Mark the Shark Sabella. How are you feeling today, Mark? Doing great, Joe. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I wish I could say the NBA is doing fine. How are <laughs> COVID and injuries affecting the association right now? Well, just like with the other sports, Joe, it's uh, not looking good. In fact, there was a um, 12th hour cancellation even for tonight's game between San Antonio and um, uh, the Heat. Uh, and that is the 10th game to be postponed this year in the association. Uh, it just doesn't seem to be getting any better right now. Uh, I guess kind of on the good news, Kyrie Irving cleared protocols and is going to be playing the road games for uh, Brooklyn at this point in time. If you want to uh, call that kinda... good news, yes. <laughs> he kind of just came out with a, two, a comment two hours ago. His exact quote was, I knew the consequences to be unvaccinated However, I wasn't prepared for them by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, yeah, I, I kind don't of know what to yeah. make about any of that. But uh, uh, yeah, he and uh, KD are now cleared to join Harden and, and they cleared protocols. So the Brooklyn Nets are uh, getting their team back together. But other teams are going down like the Miami Heat tonight, and they uh, don't even have eight players to suit up, which is the league minimum. Right. Toronto had eight players the other night. Four were hardship guys that just got off the street, I guess, right before uh, yeah. the game. Yeah, in fact, um, kind of a hardship deal for the, your Dallas Mavericks. Mm. Uh, they picked up Isaiah Thomas, who left the Lakers after a hardship 10-day agreement. And uh, they, he, he's willing to join the, the Mavericks going forward because they don't have anybody. Yeah. Uh, Luca's out and the, and the rest of the team is out. So like you were saying, Joe, there's a lot of hardship mm. players, a lot of people coming in from the G League and, and overseas and, you know, in the stands and wherever else they can find them. I think the craziest story was Orlando, though. Uh, they had 13 players out. Six for COVID, <laughs> one getting cleared, and six with injuries. So that, that's going to be a new record right there. I think so. I think if you can only suit up two players, yeah, you're going to be out a while. <laughs> Without a doubt. So I don't know how many it was, but I know as of Sunday evening, it was like 116 or something. I'm sure it's a lot more now, but uh, it, yeah. it's, it's crazy. Yes, absolutely. So your picks went, uh, I don't know, how did they go last week? They, they seem to be doing pretty well, I thought, on Christmas Yeah, they, they went well overall, Joe. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to point out to you, to, and you and I kind of talked about this last week and the, the previous week, I want to kind of point it out to, for the listeners that um, one of the games, I, I went five and three on uh, the eight games where the point spread or the situation in the game really didn't change. The one game I'm kind of saying is a push or I wouldn't have done this is if you'll recall last week, I, I, I said that I would take Utah at home against Dallas in the fifth game of the uh, Christmas day games. And, uh, and by the way, all five of them went off, which was 
amazing that the, that the NBA and was able to p- pull that off. Um, but uh, yeah, the fifth game, you and I were kind of predicting Utah would be home home favorites at five five points. But the a- aforementioned Dallas Mavericks, who had to have to pick up uh, G League players right now, didn't even really have a full team. They were probably playing with eight guys that suited up. The line went to 15 and a half in that game, and then Utah won by four. So there really isn't any way I would have taken that bet. I probably would have switched that to a money line if I was going to do anything at all on that. So my thinking is, A, you got to keep keep on the lines and keep looking at these things as, as we're in a very fluid situation with COVID, but also – if it gets to the point where it's just not worth making that bet anymore, then don't do it. Well, that's sound advice. So speaking of betting, who are we going to take over the next seven days? Um, so for this week, Joe, coming up, um, we'll start. Uh, I'm going to I picked a, a game or two each of the next several days. I'm going to go a little quicker on this uh, to get them all in on the air. And then also it'll be posted on, on the website also. Uh, So Philadelphia goes into Brooklyn uh, on Thursday, uh, the 30th. And Philadelphia is 18 and 16 overall, 12 and eight on the road, but they're three and seven against the spread in the last 10 road games. They're going into Brooklyn who is now, putting together their, what they hope to be a championship run team. However, Brooklyn with their kind of, uh, you know, mini team, I guess, or lack of team lately has been two and two in their last four at home, one and three against the spread at home. Um, I'm looking, oh, and and they they actually beat Philadelphia uh, as home dogs uh, uh, back on on the 16th of December I'm guessing Brooklyn is going to be about a three and a half point favorite uh, at home although Irving won't be playing at home games anyways because he still remains unvaccinated <laughs> right. even after all he said I'm going to take Brooklyn and give the three and a half against Philadelphia a little bit of a revenge factor on that one and also kind of putting their team back together a little bit uh, in the same uh, goes for Cleveland at Washington that day. Cleveland has been extremely hot lately. Uh, they they are twenty five and nine against the spread, Joe, in all their games this year. Twenty and fourteen overall. Uh, they're eight and two against the spread in their last ten. However, Ricky Rubio, um, their star uh, guard, went down with a horrendous knee injury last night. He's going to get MRIs, and he's going to be out for a long time. I think that's really going to hurt Cleveland going forward. Uh, And Washington is starting to pick it up a little bit. They're 11-4 and at home. Uh, um, Let's see. They've been on the road almost the whole month of December. And so I'm going to take Washington in one of their rare home games and take, uh, take them on the money line on that i'm guessing washington will be probably four point favorites but i'll take i'll take them on the money line uh let's see phoenix at boston on new year's eve uh phoenix has actually lost the last three games against the spread including the christmas day game at home against golden state who remains uh or remains my number one team in the nba they are probably going to be a point and a half favorite um, at Boston. Boston is 3-1-1 one, and one, uh, at home against the spread in the last six, last five. Nine and six at home overall. I'm actually going to take Boston with any points. I think that, that Phoenix is kind of reeling right now. That's going to be kind of my, I guess, my surprise pick of the week. On New Year's Day, you got Chicago. Uh, 21 and 10 overall, 10 and six on the road, 20 and 11 against the spread at Washington. Uh, Washington will be coming off a back to back. And Washington lost to Philly in their, their only other home game in, in the last several weeks. 
I'm thinking that Washington will be three point favorites in this game. And I would take Chicago with the points on that. Golden State will be playing Utah on New Year's Day. And that will be the game of the week. Uh, Golden State is uh, with uh, Curry hitting his 3,000 uh, three pointer last night. Joe, uh, another exciting milestone for for uh, Curry yes, and the uh, great Steph Curry. Exactly. <laughs> Golden State will be giving two. Uh, they're four and zero. Uh, the last four straight up, even though they lost to Denver at home last night. And um, uh, of course, I'm looking to for Golden State to continue the road win uh, ways over Utah, even though Utah is really good at home. They've been one in five against the spread in the last six at home. So uh, just finally, I'm just going to wrap it up really quickly. Uh, Monday, January uh, the 3rd, Memphis is at Brooklyn. Brooklyn uh, is is probably going to be a three and a half point favorite. I already gave you their home statistics. Memphis is four and one in their last five road games. Uh, And their only loss was in Golden State. I'm actually going to take Memphis here with any points that Brooklyn would be giving to just, just to kind of keep the game close. Miami plays at uh, Golden State on uh, also on Monday the third. I'm going to say Golden State give the seven, uh, or I'm thinking they'll give uh, give seven in that game. Miami is again um, postponed tonight, so I'm going to actually take Golden State on the money line on on uh on that type of bet also thinking that that point spread is going to change dramatically uh by next monday on tuesday memphis plays at cleveland uh memphis is uh 21 and 14 straight up 10 and 6 on the road against the spread and cleveland is actually um 10 and 7 at home but better on the road than they are at home uh i'm actually going to take cleveland on the money line on that one Joe, I'm guessing it'll be a three-point spread for Cleveland at home. And then finally, on Wednesday, uh, January 5th, you got Golden State playing at Dallas. We don't know if Luka will be back. We don't even know if Dallas will be fielding a full team at that point. I'm guessing Golden State will be two-and-a-half-point favorites. I just told you that they are, um, you know, road warriors right now. So I would take – you know, I'm going to take Dallas uh, and and actually take the points on that. Uh, and probably there's going to be a lot of them. <laughs> so that's it. Well, Mark, thank you for being on the show. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Have a happy new year. Our next guest today is our college basketball handicapper, Ronnie McKinnon. How's it going today, Ronnie? Joe, I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Looking forward to the new year. Right on. So what's been going on in the world of college hoops? Well, Joe, uh, there actually hasn't been any uh, men's basketball games since last Wednesday, the day, uh, the last show we had. Um, There is some games going on um, today. There was actually a couple games yesterday on Tuesday, right? Number four, Gonzaga uh, won and number one, Baylor won, both by big margins. the uh, today actually uh, Duke at Clemson got canceled because of COVID, like uh, several other games have been. Um, then the uh, only other game is Nichols State. Um, they are actually um, from Thibodeau, Te- uh, Thibodeau, Tennis, Louisiana. Oh, there I got it right. And uh, they're at number three, Purdue. Um, then of course there's. Um, some games tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, Right now we're still at uh, the top 10 being Baylor at number one, Duke at number two, Purdue at number three, Gonzaga's number four, UCLA's number five, Kansas uh, uh, went up, moved up one to uh, number six, Uh, USC moved up one to number seven, Iowa State moved up one to number eight, all because Arizona uh, moved down three spots from number six to number nine. And now a new number 10 this week is uh, Michigan State. Alabama fell out of number 10 
they went down to number 19, losing their last two games. Um, so yeah. Michigan State uh, wasn't ranked at the beginning of the season. That's right. That got uh, head coach Tom Izzo pretty upset, feeling pretty insulted. And a little inspiration for Michigan State usually recruits very well. Exactly. Yeah. So they did move into number 10. And um, uh, I think I did see that Nevada is going to uh, be a replacement team and actually play Kansas. That's correct. It was supposed to be Harvard and Kansas, and it's uh, going to be Nevada at, at number six, Kansas. Correct. No. Oh, do we know when that game is going to be? Well, played? they say I, you know, it's been things have been changing a lot lately because of COVID and it. And um, as of um, earlier before the show, the game is supposed to be tonight. Oh, today. tonight, no. the Wednesday, the 29th. And so um, but there's been it's just been a lot of weird stuff going on. But um, right. yeah, they're supposed to be Nevada at Kansas, number six, Kansas. Okay. Well, we mustn't uh, forget the women uh, basketball. How is that top 10 that's, and uh, that action going that's right um the women actually haven't um played since last thursday um they there was a game yesterday uh chattanooga tennessee uh, uh, tennessee won by like 50 points um the uh there is um a game today north texas at number 10 baylor and there's um four games tomorrow um We'll have uh, number seven, Tennessee is playing, uh, number three, Louisiana, uh, number five, North Carolina State, and number one, South Carolina will all be playing. Uh, number eight, Indiana um, at Rutgers, that game is also canceled because of COVID. So mm -hmm. the, um, the top 10 in women, South Carolina is still number one. Um, Louisiana actually moved into number two, dropping Stanford to number three. Arizona at four, North Carolina State number five, Maryland number six, Tennessee number seven, Indiana number eight, Michigan number nine, and Baylor is number 10. Uh, I, I think you meant to say Louisville, not Louisiana at number two. I'm Did guessing. I say Louisiana? Oh, I think so. Ah, okay, well, it is Louisville. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Yes. I had Louisiana on the mind earlier from that Thibodeau yep. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, anyway. I didn't hear Connecticut uh, with Gina Oriema in that top 10. Right. Is, is, is this like the first time in, I don't know how many years, well, I, Connecticut is not in the top 10? Yeah, well, most likely, I don't know exactly if that's true, but I would I would gather to bet that is probably true, yeah, <laughs> that 15, they're not in the top 10. 15 right? or in, 20 years. In I women's, in, for yeah. women's NCAA, yeah, yeah. that's right, yeah. Yes. Um, I don't see a lot of spread for women's games, but I know there tend to be a lot bigger blowouts in the women's game than the men's game. Well, but, there, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of blowouts in the men's too, but yeah, that, that might be have some truth to it. Mm -hmm. So obviously you didn't really have any spread predictions on last week's show, right? Because no, I, all I the didn't. games were exactly. all wiped out by COVID. Well, yeah, a lot of them. Um, and I don't think they all were I think maybe they didn't schedule some for college over the uh, the hmm. holiday. I'm not sure, but um, the in men's basketball, um, like I say, there'll be um, several games. Um, the one game tomorrow, there'll be several games Saturday, hmm. um, Sunday, and Monday. So I will be making some picks, uh, two or three picks probably um, uh, in with those games uh, coming up Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and I will put them on the site um, okay. this Friday. So we don't have any spreads out yet on any of those games? No. So we'll have to look on the website for your hot picks? Yeah, I'll do that Friday and Friday uh, on the website and um, um, for some games that uh, will be playing Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So. Okay. Well, Ronnie, I, I know obviously baseball is your favorite sport. One final note before I let you go. Did you hear where Carson City's own Matt Williams is going to be next season? Well, you know, Joe, uh, you mentioned that to me earlier. I hadn't heard that. Um, I know, you know, Matt Williams, uh, my older brother is actually um, a friend of his. Uh, they've known each other a long time. Of course, my older brother was a, gi a giant fan also. And I know Matt was from here, but no, I didn't hear the latest news. Uh, he's going to be San Diego's third base coach. 
And do you know what he's been doing for the last two years? Something about uh, out of the country doing something. Uh, right? yes. Yeah. He's managing in Korea the last two years. Wow. Yes. Interesting. So that's why we haven't seen him around. But, yeah, uh, he's a uh, he's uh, uh, a big uh, baseball guy. I think uh, I think yes. he'll be a, a good coach. Well, he was manager of the year one year uh, with Washington way back in the day. Yeah, uh, I think uh, that'll be hard to believe that yeah. he, then he got fired like two years later. So. Right, and then and with San, with the Padres, right, and with the uh, the new manager there. So yes, that's. Uh, uh, it's Bob Melvin. He was he coached yeah. with he coached with the A's for uh, a couple of years uh, yeah, under Bob Melvin, and now he's right. going to coach under him again. Yeah, because that's where Melvin was, and then uh, he's moved on. And uh, then we got Kotze being the uh, the new manager for the A's, Mark Kotze. Right. You know? right. Well, good luck for Matt Williams. Exactly. Totally good luck for him. I you know again uh, you know. Um, he was a giant, but he was a good ball player, and he's a good guy. And uh, from from everything I know and I've heard, and I uh, wish him luck. Yeah, maybe it's a, this will be a stepping stone to another managing job. There you go. Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, Ronnie, thank you for the info. Yeah. Well, thank you, Joe, and thanks for having me. And uh, everybody, uh, wish a happy new year. Our final guest today is our huge hockey fan, Gator Gates. How goes it today, Gator? Oh, I'm excellent, Joe. Thank you. So what's happening lately in the National Hockey League? Well, hockey returned Tuesday with three games, and that brings the total of postponed games up to 80 games now. Now, Monday, the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention cut down the recommendation, uh, recommended isolation period from 10 days to five. Now, we have to look at Canada to see what they're doing. Quebec had already banned fans, and the Providence of Manitoba capped ticket crowds to 250. Now, after that uh, announcement came out, the NHL banned all games in Canada, so that raised the number of postponed games up to 80 as of right now. Now, well, during the break, the NHL decided to bring back the taxi squads, and each team will have up to six players on the squad, and it will be in use at least until the All-Star break. Now, as of right now, the Winter Classic in Minnesota is still scheduled for the first, and they plan on having 40,000 fans at the target field. Now, Joe, I think the New Year's outdoor game is a great tradition, and it would be really sad if they didn't play that game. Well, it's a great tradition, be, you know, playing hockey on, on a place that's not an ice rink. Uh, we just did it last year in Tahoe. It's, of course, we didn't have any fans, but it, it was beautiful to look at anyway. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly, Joe. Yes, it's just different, and the players love the Winter Classics. Well, the other thing, Joe, is that the NHL relies so much on ticket price, uh, tickets for revenue, more so than the other sports. So to have these games that are outside where they're getting, you know, 30, 40, 50,000 fans, it's just excellent for the sport. Well, how's this taxi squad rule going over amongst the players? Well, Brad Marchand for the Boston Bruins, he openly criticized the league's decision to opt out of the 2022 Winter Olympics. Uh, he tweeted a statement Tuesday that questioned the logic behind the NHL and the NHL Players Association agreeing to add taxi squads and refusing to you do the same for the Winter Games. Now, Marchand believes that the league could have allowed players to go to Beijing while teams made up the postponed games during the Olympic break. Now, the players should have been given the choice of forfeiting their pay while competing in the Olympics. Now, Brad also added that the NBA and the NFL have both loosened their testing standards and that the NHL needs to do the same. If uh, guys are fine, there is no reason for them not to be playing. So as far as testing goes, I agree with Brad if it was just in the United States or Canada, but it's hard to get two countries to agree on anything, and it looks like COVID is no exception. Yeah, it's a shame we're not getting our players over there. Uh, just my opinion, if you want to go and you're willing to forfeit your pay, you should be allowed to go and represent your country. But, yeah, I agree, Joe. I think it should be the player's decision as well. Yes, but of course, ownership... Uh, you know, the NHL itself is all about the owners and they're going to want to protect their investments. 
but uh, it's not not the way I, I want to see it. I don't want to see us uh, get our butts handed to us uh, by other teams when we don't have our best players out there. And uh, the one I'm looking at uh, is Russia, who, who won in 2018, and they're favored again. And they have the second best league in the world besides the NHL. And uh, now I think they just become uh, much more heavily favored. What, what do you think about that? Look, well, Joe, I, I agree with everything you said there. Um, that is the second best league in the world, and a lot of players do love, love going over there after they play here in the United States. Uh, the only thing, Joe, is that that I see is that the uh, those players from Russia are a little bit older, and the guys that you're going to see from Canada are going to be the younger young guys, college kids. So I don't know how that's going to go. It's going to be pretty interesting. But if I'm going to be betting, I'm going to be betting on uh, Canada. And maybe that might be in my heart a little bit. Well, I'm sure you'll get better odds on Canada. So but that might be the way to go. I, I, I think you would too, Joe. Okay. Well, uh, have we played any games lately to know who's hot or not, our usual hot or not segment? Um, well, not really, Joe. Uh, like I said, there was three games yesterday, but I'm just going to basically go off of last week where uh, you have three teams that are winless or not winless, haven't lost a game. Uh, Pittsburgh and Nashville are 7-0, and and Vancouver is 6-0. and Now, Tampa Bay won last night to extend their hot streak to 9-1, and and Carolina is 6-1. and Okay. Well, did any of the games you predicted at last week actually go off? <laughs> exactly. I did pick six uh, teams last week. Uh, four of them got canceled on Monday. But I did hit two yesterday. Uh, Tampa Bay uh, beat Montreal five to four, and San Jose beat Arizona eight to seven in a shootout. Wow, eight seven. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed that game. Yeah, that would have been a great game to watch. Well, two and zero oh last week. Excellent job. Uh, now, who's going to win the games this week? Okay, Joe. Well, Thursday I have two of them. I have Carolina over Montreal, and I have San Jose over Philly. Friday, I like uh, the Vegas Knights over Anaheim. Saturday, I have three games. I have Boston over Buffalo, Florida over Montreal, and Edmonton over the Islanders. Sunday, I have three games as well. I have Pittsburgh over San Jose, Colorado over Anaheim, and Dallas over Arizona. And my only last game I have on Tuesday would be Anaheim over Philadelphia. Well, hopefully they all get played, Joe. Well, we'll see how that turns out. And the World Junior Hockey Championships, we have to mention, are going on right now. And those games are bettable, correct? Yeah, Joe, correct. Uh, they how are is, very bettable. How is that tournament shaping up? Well, until, um, the World Junior Hockey Championships are going on in Alberta, Canada. Uh, the U.S. won their first game 3-2 to two over Slovakia, but had to forfeit their Tuesday game against Swiss one to nothing. That was due to two positive COVID tests among the players. Now, the current title holders will be reevaluated to see if they can play Sweden Wednesday night, which is actually today. And that is the only game that the Stars and Stripes miss. They should be okay. They do take uh, the top four teams out of each group in the United States is in Group B, and that's with Slovakia, Sweden, Russia, and Switzerland. Now, Joe, this is the U-20 team, not the Olympic team. And I right. just bring the, that. Uh, the under-20 team, yes. Correct. I see a lot of soccer guys, and it's the same thing in soccer, where they'll think that uh, it's the United States team when it's actually the U-20 team, yes. and not the Olympic team, correct? Well, USA won it last time. Do you have a favorite this time around? Um. <laughs> I, so, I like Canada. I, I really okay. do. Yeah. Okay. yeah just okay. them. <laughs> Taking Canada again. All right. No, well, they, have, they have a kid named Power, and, and um, they haven't come out with the Olympic lineups yet. But I think this kid, Power for Canada, he's going to be on that Olympic team. Right. Well, Gator, we appreciate your information. Okay. Well, I thank you, Joe, and having me. And uh, thank you so much, to all you listeners out there. Sponsored by MXE Media, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time for the moments we've all been waiting for, 
the stories that make us furious about bets that appeared surely to be winners, but in the end, something went horribly wrong and they ended up being losers. It's the segment we affectionately call You Got Hosed. You Got Hosed. So Gator, do you have a You Got Hosed story this week? Yeah, Joe, um, we're going to be sticking with hockey again. And uh, this week, the International Ice Hockey Federation announced Friday that they were going to cancel all of its January events. That includes the 2022 U18 Women's World Champions in Sweden. Now, this is the second year that they will not have this tournament. Now, meanwhile, the IIHF had the 2021 U18 Men's World Champions in Texas, and the men's 2022 is still scheduled for April in Germany. Now, the IIHF said that the recommendations come from the organization's medical committee, and the news upset many players who believe that the pandemic has widened the gender gap in the sport. Now, USA Hockey asked Monday for, for the International Ice Hockey Federation to reconsider. But Joe, I would have to say that the girls, they still got host. Yes, it sounds like they did. Joe, do you have a You Got Host story for this week? Yeah, I had a couple. Uh, I'll pick one. Yeah, I got hosed last Sunday. I took Detroit plus three and a half at halftime on a five-team parlay. It was 10 to 10 at the half. In the fourth quarter, Detroit is down 2013, and they go all the way down to the nine-yard line with only two and a half minutes left, and it's fourth down. Go for it, right? You're the Lions. What have you got to lose? The coach decides to kick a field goal, 2016. I'm losing by half a point. But Detroit gets the ball back again, drives all the way to the nine-yard line, first and goal, Tim Boyle throws an interception on the one-yard line with 33 seconds left. Everything else on the parlay hits, and I lose my five-teamer by half a point. I got hosed. Yeah, you sure did, Joe. You got hosed. Big Rich, do you have a you got hosed story this week? Unfortunately, Joe, I do. I mean, I was watching the site. I already took Minnesota Gophers. They're just killing West Virginia. They can't even move the football. I already got that minus six. I know that's a winner. I listened to Gator Gates. He told me to take uh, Las Vegas Golden Knights on the puck line. I took them. So I've got two winners going. So the second half, I know West Virginia can't move the ball. So I look and see what the what the point spread was. It was four points, second half, to uh, West Virginia. Take Minnesota. Of course they're going to. They're going to cover that four easy. They've just been controlling the, the football. So they go down, score, field goal. So all I need is one point, seven minutes left. Minnesota's got the ball. They're driving down the field. They're driving down the field. They get all the way to the two-yard line. And all I have to do is punch it in, and I got my winner. And what does P.J. Fleck, the coach of Minnesota Gophers, do? He says, I'm going to show some class and I'm going to take a knee instead of punching it in or kicking a field goal on fourth and goal. He gives the ball back on a knee to the other team. And I got hosed my second half bet. Unbelievable. Even in a bowl game, the coach decides to do that. I know. I mean, at least there should be somebody you could put in there and just say, Hey, give you a, give you a, Hey PJ, give it to the kid that never ever played before. Let him run the touchdown in, but he did. Yeah, and, that- uh, that senior that never gets the ball, give it to him. See what he can do <laughs> exactly. in his so last got, game. In his last game, man, I got host. Yeah, you got host. You got host. So that's all for this week's show. I'd like to thank my guests, Big Richard Martin, Ronnie McKinnon, Mark the Shark Sabella, and Gator Gates, our producer, our engineer, our editor, our junior IT tech, Caden Martin and everyone for listening. We'd like you to visit our Covering the Field website to check out our many articles and our picks of the day and week. We'd like to remind you listeners to email us at coveringthefield at gmail.com. Give us your feedback, your You Got Hose moments, and any other comments you'd like to give us, and find us on Twitter at Covering Field. Hopefully you all enjoyed the show, and you'll hear us again next week on another episode of Covering the Field. You've been listening to Covering the Field. A 
CM World Services and the Sage Production.